What's going on, everybody? It's Treeb from Treeb Talks here. And today, you know, is Monday, so usually we put videos out on Monday, which is usual Treeb Talk schedule. And I didn't really have a video planned for today. And I wake up this morning to the news of Leonard Fournette getting released by the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, I could make just like, I could have made like a short live video about that. And of course, yesterday Yannick and Gokwe got traded to the Minnesota Vikings, but that was like, the Yan thing was something that was going on for a long time. I think us as Jags fans, uh, everybody that's been covering the Jaguars and everybody that's just been involved with the Jaguars knew that that Yan trade was coming. And, you know, during the season last year and during the offseason this year, you know, there were rumors that Leonard Fournette was on the trade block. So, you know, maybe if we traded Leonard Fournette, there was some value there. But there was no way I thought we would trade Leonard Fournette, let alone cut Leonard Fournette. Fournette, from all the training camp videos that I have seen, and I have talked to some of the guys that have been at training camp each and every day, and Fournette has looked better than he has in any other camp that he has participated in and last year played better than he ever has his rookie season obviously his best season he looked better than that last year I don't know if you guys are going to forget this he had 1600 all-purpose yards led the Jags in reception in receptions last year and was a big part in Gardner Minshew's success he would he did things last year to improve his game drastically. Pass blocking, you know, that was the big knock on him heading into last year. You know, he's not very good at pass protection. What'd he do? He upped that up so high to the point where that wasn't even a knock on his game anymore. To where people would say that that's a strength to him. That's, you know, one of the biggest parts of his game that he does well. And this year, he was going to be a exponential part of the Jacksonville Jaguars offense and he was gonna help Leonard Fournette I you know I've seen tons of Gardner Minshew film breakdown where you know he is just dominant in the play action game the Jaguars have been a team for years that have been a run first offense and Leonard Fournette has faced more loaded boxes than any running back in the last three years because the Jaguars have been so one-sided to running the football that, you know, Fournette had no other option to face, you know, loaded boxes time in and time out. So, with a new system with Jay Gruden, you would have thought, putting in Leonard Fournette in that situation, loaded boxes, they know what the Jags like to do, and they, you know, got that play action going with Gardner Minshew, that this offense really could have been something, especially with how these wide receivers are showing out in camp, especially with the depth they have at that position. That has already been talked about, that that's the position that's the hardest, you know, to make those roster cuts. It's been the most competitive room in training camp all season long. And what you do is low-key, you eliminate the biggest asset to that wide receiver room in Leonard Fournette. Leonard Fournette opens up the pass game. He opened that up. Leonard Fournette was going to be a huge piece of the Jaguars offense next year. This year. He was going to be a huge piece. And for what? You released him for what? Because you didn't want to give him a contract next year? Like, what even is... You don't give anybody fucking contracts. You don't extend anybody. You only extend the wrong people. So what even is the point of that? If you don't want to give him a contract next year, then don't, because you guys never do anyway. So you might as well keep him on the damn team and let him ride out this season and try to get some success on that offensive side of the ball. And if he would have earned that, he would have earned that contract, and he would have got it, and he would have been a part of this fucking football team. Why on earth would you have waived Leonard Fournette? This is the guy that was the most essential piece to of the offense last year. I know you talk about DJ Chark. You talk about Gardner Minshew. Leonard Fournette had an ex excellent year last year. A year where he stepped up. A year where he was just improving, improving, improving every chance he got. Every opportunity he had, he got better. He developed. He improved his game. And he's a fan favorite. And everybody loved him. And everybody was hoping nothing but the best for Fournette. And this was a guy that makes your team better. 
This is the guy that makes your offense better. Why on earth does this move make any sense? And you look at the replies, and you look at some of the things, and you look at what people are saying, and it, you know people are saying this almost guarantees that the Jacksonville Jaguars are tanking for Trevor Lawrence. Now let me tell you why that is bullshit. And I am not going to be a Jaguars homer right now. The fact of the matter is this. The Jaguars are not going to be tanking for Trevor Lawrence because they almost can't. There's no way. Like, I'm sorry. Like, and it doesn't make any sense for the front office to even be thinking that way right now. For how much effort they're putting into Gardner Minshew. How much press they're giving Gardner Minshew. Like, that doesn't make any sense. Like, why? And especially, you know, why? Why would that be what they're doing? Tanking for Trevor Lawrence. Like, because they're putting so much stock into Gardner Minshew right now. And Minshew's working hard. They have a lot of talented wide receivers. It's like they're going out of their way to make this team worse. Everything they do is just because of that hashtag. That hashtag because Jaguars. Hashtag because Jaguars. Like, none of the shit that the Jacksonville Jaguars ever do makes any fucking sense. This video's probably gonna get demonetized because I cuss too much, but I really don't care. Because this move was one of the most idiotic, stupid moves I've ever seen. You look at the screenshots, you look at everything that people are showing. This 2017 Jags team was the biggest fluke of all time in the history of the NFL. Not on the fault of the players. Not on the fault of the players, but this front office completely demolished a team that they built. You built that team. You got all those guys together. You drafted all those guys. And you didn't. It's not like you didn't have any cap space. It's not like you didn't have money to give to these guys when you could have. You extended the wrong people. You made enemies. You brought in a 73-year-old man that completely crumbled the organization from the inside out. That had no business in the role that you put him in. And he completely demolished this football team and put it into shambles and put it into where it is right now. And that is back at rock bottom where the Jacksonville Jaguars have been forever, for the last 10, 15 years. And this team has only been around since 1995. And this is so hard. It's so hard. How can you expect to get revenue from a team that does not produce on the field, except if you maybe get a surprise year. That was what 2017 was. You look at that. You put asses in seats. You're not going to put asses in seats in 2020 because obviously Corona and all that, but you put asses in seats there because 2017, you're building a team and you finally did it. You finally fucking did it. Congratulations. You finally did it. I'm so freaking happy for you there. But then, when you have to do everything that you need to do to keep these essential pieces around and keep everybody that you need to, you don't do it. And you do it the wrong way. Extending Blake Bortles. Not extending Yannick Ngakwe when you had the chance. Trading Calais Campbell away, a locker room leader. Like, all of your money that you have spent, when you had that cap room, you, in you invested it into bullshit. You invested it into guys that you shouldn't have. You invested it into two quarterbacks that oh, that you should never have done it to. Guys that should still be here. I know, you know, Telvin Smith is an awkward one to talk about because you never know what he was going to do. And, I mean, Jalen Ramsey, man, why was that never a focus? I don't, I'll never understand. Allen Robinson, I mean, come on, dude, like, there is just so many different things that this team could have done and could have spent their money to where this team could still be like a perennial playoff team because it's not like the AFC South is hard. It's not a difficult division. It's not a hard division to win. You keep that defense around and you pick the players there that you need to keep around and you're set. But no, you end up with situations like this where you wave your best offensive player from a season ago. You trade your fucking locker room leader in Calais Campbell, and then you got a guy like Yannick Ngakwe who doesn't even want to be on the team anymore. That's what you get. That is what you get in Jacksonville right now. And it is so below average, and it's so interesting at the same time because you don't know what you're going to get next year. And I'm fuming about it because I loved Leonard Fournette. I loved what he did for the team. I loved watching him play. 
Leonard Fournette, I love you. And I wish you nothing but the best wherever you go next, man. Thank you for watching that video, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure if you haven't already, you can check all the links down below. You can like me on Facebook, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Troop Talks. Or follow me on Instagram, at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, if you haven't yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop a new video on here once a week. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great rest of your day.